We're on page uh, 68 in chapter 27, Peter Chavzayin and Tanya. And we're learning that a little control, a little self-control that we do here on earth when we have urges, impulses, extraneous thoughts, and we push them aside, although they'll come back again and again and again, Hashem gets such pleasure from seeing us able to control ourselves, even just one time, and surely a second and third time, that Hashem, it triggers a a response that's way beyond the action, the behavior. And al Rebbe quoted this posik, it's on page 68, about seven lines down, towards the end of the page, towards the end of the line. That when a Russia, when a wicked, when someone wicked or something wicked is, one does chuva for it and converts and transforms the 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 bad, the ra, to to good. That means Moshe, the ra becomes yoim, the ra becomes day, which is means light and good. Hashem says that's something being done for me. And the end of that that section, Al Rebbe adds kind of fleetingly like a, a, a few words that we don't pay attention to, but they're very important. Kadeskafia sitra achre, the stalik yikara de kuchubrichu lieila. When we subjugate the sitra achre here, we create and cause the preciousness, the dearness of God to be revealed on high. Now the Alter Rebbe is going to say that this is true not just for not just for for controlling inappropriate thoughts, but also for permissible matter. So here, Moshe, we're jumping. We're going over, not something that is forbidden or like an inappropriate thought. No, it's kosher food. It's not Lashon Hara, but you have this great taiva to, to, to speak about it. Look inside now. I want to let's look, learn the words of the Alter Rebbe. V'lo yoyid, Moshe, you have it after the the period. And not only is control important and significant when it comes to inappropriate thoughts, but even permissible matter completely. The more a person slaughters his yetzer, his inclination. Afilu shaw kala, even if it was just if it's just for a temporary moment. Yes. Yeah, I just want to say, since we've been learning this chapter, I've been feeling <laughs> I've been feeling that no matter how many times I try to slaughter the Yitzhara, it comes back even stronger. <laughs> okay, the reason is because it's it it's kind of new to you. Once you get into the mode of pushing aside and work and doing that, it'll become more natural and you won't have that feeling. So don't give up, stick with the program. Okay. That's the tendency. Dr. Neva, by the way, addresses your question later in a different chapter that the Yetzirah sees that a person is trying hard to control their, their, themselves so he comes back with he comes back with a vengeance it's only a matter of time that he'll calm down because he sees you're talking to a wall buddy 
I'm serious. And, and think about it. People who harass you. People who have tainus against you. Let's say in shul, you're the gabai and all that stuff. If you just nicely smile and say, I hear you. He comes back the second day. Hillel, and he says, Moshe, you didn't give me an aliyah, you lowlife. What is with you? Hmm, you're right. Let me think about it. You do it two, three, four times. You'll see that he will realize I'm wasting my time and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he won't conclude that way, but he'll stop nudging. The same as the Yetzirah. When the Yetzirah sees that we are steadfast in our re resolution to reject him and his thoughts and everything else, he goes to try to find another customer and he leaves us alone. Hila, what do you want to say? And I've seen, I've seen that happen with Moshe as the Gabe at Ishkosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you see what I'm what I'm sharing with Moshe is that he should apply that to what he said before. Yeah, for sure. Moshe said, since I've been, we've been learning this, the Yitzhara comes harder and harder back to me. The answer is five a month. We say in Yiddish. I don't want to say it in English because it's not that nice, but go somewhere, you know? Sorry, chap, you talked to the wrong person. And once and twice and three times, four times, he's going to just just keep with the program. Trust me. I tried it. It worked. Okay, let's continue. So he says, now we're talking here about Tanya, not about forbidden matter, permissible food, for example. Dr. Rebbe says, the longer you, you, you shecht, you slaughter your Yetzirah, even if it's just a temporary, for a temporary moment, and you do so with the intent of subjugating the negative side, he gives us now concrete examples. We're in the middle of the page, about 10, 12 lines down, Hillel. Kegoin, shechofetz lechoil, a person has a real desire to eat. He's hungry. And he delays his meal for an hour, for a while, or less than an hour. And in that time, he learns Taita during that time. It's not that he plays cards or he serves the internet. We're talking about he's hungry, he wants to eat, and he has this strong desire, and it's kosher food. And he says, you know what? I'm going to break that inclination that I must eat now. And what am I going to do instead? Something holy. Again, learning Torah, putting on film with a Jew, visiting someone. In other words, you're substituting your, your strong chayfetz, your strong desire to eat, and you push it aside. Look further. Kedisa the Gemara. Dr. Rebbe quotes the Gemara. Shodan is the fourth hour of the day. Michael Kolodim, everyone eats. Shoshishi is the sixth hour of the day. Michael Tamid Chachomim. Why? If everyone's eating at 10 in the morning, Tamid Chachomim are eating at 12, says the Gemara. Says the Gemara. They would starve themselves. They would hunger themselves. Stay shows. <laughs> Excuse me. Two hours. Le Kavona Zu. For this purpose, to specially say to the Yetzirah, you want to eat now? Too bad, I'm delaying. You can't say, Hillel, that if they wouldn't, if they wouldn't delay their eating for two hours, they wouldn't learn later in the day. They learned anyway the late the rest of the day. They would tell me to come, and that was their job. So if they're learning anyway the rest of the day, what's the big deal if they ate two hours earlier when everyone else ate? The answer is because they didn't want to give it to the Yetzirah. You want to eat Dafka now? No. And this is a, a very important theme in Chabad philosophy. In Balshemta philosophy, but in the, the Rebbe really, this whole idea not to give in to the way of the world. The, the world says, the Rebbe... <laughs> And different people at Fabrengans, you know, they wore a hat that matched, and, and socks, the colors of the socks matched the hat. And they're going to poke fun at it, you know, you know, like, you want to wear a nice pair of socks? Fine. You want to wear a nice hat? Fine. Why must it match? 
Why? Because the world says if it doesn't match, you're not a mensch. That you have to break. Not that you should wear ugly socks or ugly hat and not be dressed nicely. No. But why does it have to match? That's, a, that's like a Yetzirah. That's a clipper. So this is the same concept. Why must you eat when everyone else eats? Tell me the Chachamim. Why? Because everyone goes now. Uh, the Rebbe would sometimes, the earlier speak about, he must have his glass of orange juice in the morning. If he doesn't have his glass of orange juice, he's ice man. He can't be a function during the day. And if you don't have your glass of orange juice, it's this, this idea that, you know, the Gashmias, as kosher as it is, it becomes a way of life. It becomes a way of life. I must have it this way. Who says? You say. Is that God saying it? No. Let's continue. Now he says, A person closes his mouth from speaking things that his heart desires to speak about worldly matters. He's giving an example now from Machshava Dibur Maisa. So Maisa is the eating. Now he's talking about Dibur. You're not, we're not talking here about Maisha forbidden speech. Right? You know, there are times when I, got, I have to share this with my wife. I have to share this with my friend. If it's coming from that perspective where you have to, and you're kind of bound by it, Dr. Rebbe is saying, that's a, that's a sitra achar. Don't let it control you. You don't have to. You want to. But it's kosher. It's, it's not Lush and Hara. I know it's not Lush and Hara. But if you feel you must, in other words, instead of that time, you could be learning and davening and doing mitzvahs and all that, and you feel, no, 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 I'm pushing all that aside because I must speak now. I'm not talking about it. I'm not talking about you know, you feel you, you have to speak now to enhance shalom bias. I'm not talking about that's a mitzvah. I'm talking about just this idea that we're, we're, we're guided and controlled by something out, that's outside of Kedusha. Says the Alter Rebbe, you have to uh, subjugate the feeling that I have to speak now. Let's continue. Now he says, "Rebbe Dov, is this, is, is, excuse me, but does this go fall in the category of, of Hiskafia? Yes, yes. It's going to say it in a minute. Yes, absolutely. This is Hiskafia. Thoughts of in your Hilo, not bad thoughts. You know, whatever it is, I must think about it now. Why must you think about it now? You're middle of learning." You're middle of davening. Push it off to later. But it's not a bad thought. It's not a, you know, a disgusting thought. Okay. Not now. Later. Says the Al-Tereb. Now look at the words now. I got, you have to look at Even if you just do a little bit. The iskafia. You see, Moshe says the word iskafia openly. Highlight it. Underline it. The iskafia sitra achra. Even if you just ma- do ma'at, a little of his kafya, lasata, you, you do that here on earth, you cause his talak, you cut the kucha brichu, God's preciousness to be revealed. And look what he says, uktushosoy le'ela harbe. Do a little here, and you cause a lot over there. Uktushosay le'ela harbe Hillel. He adds the words harbe. So you have to contrast the word ma'at. We do lit- a little, and that causes God to do a lot. Even if you Jews just do a one time rejection of all these three things. And you think to yourself, just like Moshe just said earlier, he was being honest. Why is it important to do that if tomorrow comes again? Dr. Rebbe just answers Moshe's question. He says, you do a little, and God says, that's worth so much by me, and it's so much greater than what you did. And don't play God. Let him do his job. So therefore, each little amount you do in the Skafia is a gigantic issue for Hashem 
and in your favor. Now the Rebbe continues, um mekdusha zu nimshechez kedusha el yoyno al ho'adar. And from this holiness that you cause in heaven by Hashem, it's then drawn down to Ha'odim Lamata to man below. Lisayoi, see you are Rav V'otzum to help you in a tremendous and most powerful way. La is is to serve God. So people ask, and Rosh Hashanah is coming. What can I do to get God's assistance? And not and God's assistance in a way that's, you know, that's heavy, that's big, powerful. The answer is just do a little, even just a little. Hashem doesn't want of us to do everything at one time because we won't be able to do it. You know, the Gemara says, to faster, marupa, late to faster. I would think, you know, doing all at once, to, you grabbed a lot, light to faster, you didn't get it. Don't go, don't go for broke. And I would think, Hillel, in your work of therapy, you know, with the addictions, you probably use this as part of, you know, do one thing at a time. Don't, don't think about what will be tomorrow, the overall greater picture. You know, am I really going to make a change? No. Don't, that, that is, a, that is in, in, in a negative to you because that's, that's a fatalistic thinking, you know? You're not God. And here we say, here Dr. Rebbe says clearly that when Hashem sees that a Yid is exerting effort, albeit, albeit, albeit in, a, in a small, minute way, Hashem blesses him and gives him Tremendous koyach, where something greater than his ability comes to him and helps him to become healthier and better. That's that's what it says right here in Tanya. And Al-Trebbe brings a, a teaching of Razal to support his thought. Man sanctifies himself a little below. He is holified, sanctified from above in the most great way. So the Vag in addition to fulfilling the positive commandment. You shall sanctify yourself. This is known as the avoda of Eskafia that you asked about, Moshe, when a person sanctifies himself. Even in matters that are permissible, says the Alter Rebbe, What is the meaning of Vizkadashtem? You, you Jews, should make yourself holy. Kloma, this means to say, Although really, you aren't separate from Sitra Achra. Come on, like we said earlier, we know who we are. Kihi betokva, we go on to page Lamed Hay. Kihi betokva ugvurasa, right? Because the Sitra Achra is still potent and powerful. Kitoldusai. Like the day it was born within us, Molly, the left ventricle of the heart, as it said earlier in chapter 9 in Tanya. Nevertheless, Rakshakavish Yitzray, the person conquers his inclination, and he holifies himself, he sanctifies himself. So when Hashem sees that we do the avoda of his Kadashtem, you shall sanctify yourself by practicing his kafya. Then the next part of the Pasik says, the Hayisim Kadoshim, Klomar, you shall be holy. In other words, in the first in the first stage, Hillel Amisha, it's like a play, a pretend. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do, but that's not really who I am. Says Hashem, I know. You just go, work at it. And if I see that you work at it, guess what? The result every end result will be you will truly become holy. Look what he says further. The end will be 
that you will truly be holy and kind of separate from the Sitra Achra, because Hashem will bless you and give you and help you in an abundant way from above, and Hashem will actually help you chase away Malibay from your heart, Me'at Ma'at, a little at a time, the Yetzirah. So Dal Tereb here gives us a, 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 a very, very important recipe for accomplishing removal of issues that haunt us. As Moshe said, those things, the Yetzirah and the, right? Al Tareb says that Hashem in the Torah Hakadosh says v'his kadashtem v'heisem kedoshim. You, this an instruction to us. We shall make ourselves holy, sanctifying ourselves, and we will become holy. So he explains that by us practicing this kafya, even though it's a little at a time, a little control here, a little control there. Although, as Moshe said earlier, it comes back the next day, the next hour. Don't pay attention. Because every time you do that, you score big points. And again, it's not about, I want to make it clear, it's not about I'm looking to score points, you know. Oh, I know God has a big piece of Leviathan waiting for me when Mashiach comes because I practice his kafya. That's a very foolish and childish way of looking at it. We're talking about practically, the more you control your behavior and the more you hold yourself back, you, 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 you give Hashem the opportunity to bless you with real power to overcome. You know, he will correct me, but you know, I think one of the things in the, AA, in the 12 step program is you know, surrender to God at the, you know, the ultimate, or the higher power, they don't maybe say God, higher power. When a person, sur- that's talking about surrender. Here we're talking about iskafia. Iskafia is not Hillel surrendering in the sense of, you know, I'm, I'm nothing. No, that's not iskafia. Iskafia means I'm a something and I have an urge, but I'm going to control myself. So I'm very much a something. But this something is going to display control. So it's a very, I think it's a very different orientation than ultimate surrender. Okay, whatever. I'm, I'm not. That's not my field. So, but I want to just in, talk. In the in the, 12, in the the language of the twelve step program, the first step is we came to believe that a power greater than us could restore us to sanity. Which, uh, which one of the things I hear in that is, yeah. I have to I have to come to this belief and I have to have a belief in the power greater than me. Okay, fine. And, the, and another very essential principle from the 12 step programs is the uh, the idea that you referred to earlier of one day at a time that recovery is one day at a time that uh, and and I think you said it very well how how when we start thinking of ourselves uh, we, when we take on too much we often set ourselves up to fail. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, these things apply to us, really. To us, I mean, here we are, you know, Torah and we're, we're we're in the ballpark, right? But it, it applies to us because we can, you can become very despondent. Moshe, I don't know if you realize what you said before. I think you do realize, but it, it, it's so real. <laughs> it's so real for the biggest Talmud Chochem and for the person who was from all his life and went to the best yeshivas, the Yetzirah doesn't discern between, you know, the Balchuva, the FFB, and this and that. It's all shtuyot. That's not true. It's not true. It's a, uh, anyone tells you that, they're living in a, in, a, in a fantasy, and they're misguided. Okay? And, and, and you've seen it in the community, and you've seen it, and you will see it, unfortunately. You know, in various ways. And I'm not even talking about those that we mentioned the other day who are sick. But even people who are not sick are plagued. <laughs> That's the, the yesh is plagued. The yesh wants self. The yesh wants pleasure. So the Al-Terebi here understands that. What I see in the Tanya is the Al-Terebi doesn't squash the pleasure. He's working with the pleasure to make it holy pleasure. 
do I ha do I have to give examples? I mean, this is if, now today. What? Go ahead, Hila. What? Go ahead. You speak. Right. 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 So you know, I'll give you an example. Right. We talk about gaiva, yesh, ego. The Gemara, the Gemara site says a Talmud Chacham. If a Talmud Chacham doesn't have a a, a shmini shebe shminis of 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 gaiva, it's it's wrong. What does that mean? Explain. It's explained the Musar Sfarim, Chassidus and Musar. You need to. You, you shouldn't be a skufa on the dress and say a doormat. If you're a doormat, that doesn't mean you're a. The, I'm sorry, a doormat does not equal being you know on the right page. It means you've turned yourself into a doormat with a lo low self-esteem and you let everyone step on your head. At the same time, to, to be sure I know the best and I know the answer and it's my way or the highway, that's, that's, that's yeshus. There needs to be a balance. So, so, so the Balatanya, you know, understands the psychology of, of humanity, of, 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 a, of regular ye. That's why he's talking to a bainani. The regular fellow, the regular w husband, wife, man, woman, child, boy, girl, makes no difference. And in a way, even a guy, this, this Nakud is applicable to anyone, to any human. And what he says today, what we learned today is, don't underestimate the little things that you do. Every act of Iskafia, as Hillel said, every, every time, even if tomorrow you fail in that area, you don't do it again, but you did it yesterday, that's a, a tremendous thing. You know, yes, Yoni, you want to say something? I remember we learned this maybe two, three years ago about this uh, Indian Iskafia. Yeah. But I, 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 what I remember when we learned, when you taught us about putting the plate Pushing it to the side. Yes. Yeah. Remember, because the whole thing, is that a very good example of that? Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. In, in, in other words, the supper, your wife gives you supper. Or you're sitting in a restaurant and you're going to eat and you push it away for one, two, three more minutes, even though you want, because and you want to eat it now, you're hungry now, that's a iskafia. Naturally, if you're able to choose a drinking water instead of delicious soda, that's a, another le higher level of iskafia. Everyone has to, you know, that's that's already the details in everyone's life. But yes, that that what you said. By the way, Yoni, I don't know if you came in a little late, but we learned that in Tanya today in the name of Chazal. That's a Chazal. Chazal say by Tamid Chachamim that they 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 kind of starve themselves. The wording the Gemara is marivim. From the word ra'av, hungry. They, they, they made themselves more hungry for two hours. Everyone ate at the 10th hour a day, let's say 10 o'clock, and they didn't eat till 12. And they learned instead, even though they learned the rest of the day, and they would have been learning anyway. But they, they said, oh, you want right now? No. And, and, and you know, see, when, 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 when you take this and you think of it like, but some people have a, a big issue with this. I'm talking about fruit people. I'm talking like, well, why if God if Hashem made something kosher and mutter, we have enough things that we're not allowed to do. Why put upon yourself more restrictions? I'm sure you've heard that, or even asked yourself that, right? So the answer is, if you look at it black and white, you know, that way, it's a good question and and. And, and a lot of people are not going to do that. But if you understand that there's a relationship issue here, in other words, my pushing aside here, you need the food, the plate, as you said, is to show who's the boss, God or I. That's, that's what's going on here. So it's not about, you know, I want to pain myself. I, I want to make more humorous. See, that, that type of thinking, you're right. I don't want... People get disgusted. Enough. I'm, I'm sick and tired of more humbus. One day it's the water has bugs. The next day the marshmallows have bugs. The third day it's watermelon. The fourth day it's tomatoes. Like, come on. You know? And who's benefiting? The cautious agencies. And then you start, you say, oh, it's all a bunch of baloney. Right? But if you understand 
that it's about a relationship. And indeed, if a child is raised, you want to look into it for yourself. And you want to, and you want to see what does Hashem say about it. And, and you want to ask yourself, am I, am I godly or am I just a person, a human being? You know, tomorrow is the day the Chabad Yeshiva Tom Chet Mimim was founded in 1897. So I made a clip now, you'll see, I'll send it out. But I was asking myself this morning as I was davening, what is special about the Lubavitch Yeshiva? You know, I studied in the Chabad Lubavitch Yeshiva all my life, from first grade till I get married. Baruch Hashem, right? And ask yourself, I still ask myself, what if I went to a Litvish yeshiva? What if I went to another Chassidish yeshiva? What if I went to a Sfardi yeshiva? Why must I, what, what, what can I share with the world? What is the benefit of sending your child or grandchildren to a Lubavitch yeshiva? And what hit me this morning is that it's about the relationship with God. In all yeshivas, they learn and they daven and they do chesed. It's true. But Taim Chet Mimim has one thing that others don't, they don't emphasize, okay, which is the relationship with God, Elikus. It's not about, you know, I don't want to say, but, you know, I'm in the community here. What do I hear? Money, money, and money. You know, and, 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 and listen. We need money. We need big money, tuitions, institutions. I, I, I'm not, but at the same time, what I want to see from a child and a student is they should talk about God, Hashem, Elikus. How do I make the world more godly? How do I make my family? In other words, you know what, what, what they called in the 60s the spirituality. You know, seeking something higher. And, and more than just, you know, pleasure, and more than just, you know, uh, uh, you know, the way of the world. And that's why there was the counterculture revolution. We're not happy with the way it was in the 40s and 50s. And, and you know, and everyone had to have a uh, wall-to-wall -wall carpet and had to have a Hollywood kitchen. The Rebbe would make fun of these things. And, you know, and, and had to have a television to watch Lucy Ball and the Fonz, you know, and all that stuff, you know. No, 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 no. Maybe I'll watch those things. But what, what I'm really interested in is Hashem. The, the, the divine. And that we got in the Labavitch Yeshiva. Through the system of the learning, especially davening, where there's a big emphasis on davening, that you got in the Chabad Yeshiva. And that's why you send your children to a Chabad Yeshiva. Yes. They might know more Gemara in a literature yeshiva. I will agree. I will say that's possible. But they won't have more divinity if they're on track. Not that the, the learning Gemara is not divine. It's Gavaldic. It's, it's, it's Hashem's Torah. The question is, you know, the, the selfish yesh in Chabad is, 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 a, is, 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 is decimated in a way where God is felt. And that, that's, that's a unique thing. So then, when you go to make money, and you go to do your therapy, and you go to work, and you go to help, and all that, it's not about yourself. And you don't say, oh, him, I'm going to help. Her, I'm not going to help. Or he's my cousin, and she's my this. I mean, I could tell you of Chassidim, who were in charge of yeshivas and their own brethren, <laughs> they looked at the same or less than others. And they and, and I know from family, and they, they were asked why. He says, you come from such a family. They don't. It's they who we need to educate and share and inspire. Now, imagine, you're the owner of a yeshiva. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into it. You're the boss, and you and you and you're basically siding with others over your own family. No, and you know what the answer is the answer is Hashem. And one last story, and I conclude. The Kleisenberger Rebbe, who was mamish, a tzaddik, and 
if you watch some of the videos, it's it's beyond words what this Jew did after he lost his wife and eleven children in the Holocaust. It's it, it's there aren't words to describe his mesitas nefesh in the camps. He talks about it. Nevertheless, when they were in the DP camp in, in Flettelfing and in Poking, over there in the German cities and areas, there was a Lubavitcher group of, of Chassidim, and they managed didn't have what to eat. Literally, it was, it was starvation. The Kloysen Megarebbe had access to, to funds, and he raised funds, and, and he had a yeshiva called Shedes HaPleita. So the Hasidim came to the leader of the Chabad community, Reb Nissen Nemanov, who found, who was, became the Mashpia in, in Brunois, France, of the Lubavitch Yeshiva. It was a very, it was a big oivit, very daven for hours, couple of soil, a skafia, I mean. So they came to him and they said, Reb Nissen, would you be willing to go to the Kloisenberger Rebbe and ask him to give you some money for the yeshiva so we should have what to eat? He said, sure. He went. The Kleiz Rebbe said to him, I want to help you and I will help you with everything. I just have one request. Do you mind adding to the name of your yeshiva, Tom Chet Mimim, also the name Sheira Sapleta, which was his his organization. Or, I'm sorry, not Sheva Sapleta. I think Shefa Chaim. Because he was a grandson, great-grandson of Rab Chaim of Tzans. Right, Shefa Chaim. That's the name of many of the Kloisenberg institutions, I think, in Netanya. Yeah. And you know Reb Nissen Nemanov? Right. And Reb Nissen Nemanov said, I can't do that. I would like to do it. But I was instructed by the previous Rebbe to be in charge of Taim Chet Mimim in Samarkand, and it's his yeshiva called Taim Chet Mimim. I do not have the right to add a name to it. And he didn't get the money and take the money. I heard this from Reb Nissen Nemanov's nephew. This is not a made up story, this is a real story. And trust me, the Hasidim, the Babichers, were very angry at him, and he didn't care. He says, I have a mandate to lead Taim Chet Mimim. Otherwise, here are the keys, do whatever you want. But since the Frida Kerebbe didn't tell me to give him back the keys, and he instructed me, I have a mandate. Now, this is an extreme story, and, you know, I'm not, but I, the Nakuda, the, the, the Nakuda, I want you to think about the Nakuda. The Nakuda is, who do we answer to? Starvation and food or God? You know, for, for me to say it, it's easy. I'm not starving. But when you're starving and, and you're facing, you don't have what to eat, it's real. But nevertheless, think about it. And there is a virtue to an individual who's so steadfast in his mandate. And, and where did he get this? That's <laughs> and that will express itself. It's like a soldier in the Israeli army who knows he has parents and he knows he has family and he knows he has community. And what does he say? He doesn't maybe say it because it's so difficult to hear. I'm defending the country even if I die, even if they kill me, I'm going to go defend this country. That is the same concept as of Nissen Nemanov not taking money to, to add a name to the name Tom Chet Mimim. I, that's the way I see it. Maybe you guys see it differently. But I see that, you know, kind of on one hand, extremism, radicalism. But it's coming from Kedusha. And for Reb Nissen, it was the previous Rebbe, his Rebbe, his Tzaddik, who gave him a mandate. In the same way, if a, if a young man or a, a girl goes into the army and is doing it for Hashem to defend the country, for Eretz HaKodesh, it's holy. 
I'm not talking about, you know, whether you're a Zionistic, Rebbe Rav Kook, or Mizrahi, I'm not, not Hezder. I'm talking about just the idea. If it is, you know, where you come to the conclusion, I want to defend the Yiddish people, that's a very, very genuine feeling. And that comes, you know, Toim Chet Mimim embedded that, embeds that in their students in various ways. So we should all think about it. Tomorrow is the day, Shabbos, it's Chay Deshelel, and of course Monday is Chay Elul, and uh, we will be in touch with the Abish's help. We'll hear Pesudah's Tevis. Good Shabbos to everyone. Zayi Gizu. Bye. Shabbos. 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 If I'm at a computer and I can teach, fine. I have to go out of town, so it might be Tuesday, okay? Let me see what happened. I'll know. I'll send you a message on Monday. Shalom. Bye.